Hey, this is Josh from Josh Builds, and today I have an awesome project for you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a drill press that can drill through wood and even metal. Before I get into this project, I first want to shout out our sponsor PCBWay.com. PCBWay is a super helpful site if you are a maker, hobbyist, or engineer like me. With PCBWay, you can get printed circuit boards built for any of your engineering projects. They also offer 3D printing services, CNC milling, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. They also have a PCB design contest you can sign up for, and they are giving out $6,000 in prizes. So make sure to go to PCBWay.com for all your maker needs. So for these types of projects, I like to build them with parts that anyone can get a hold of. So these planks of wood, for example, I got from my local dollar store, as well as the uh, dowels that you saw. So we're going to start off by using some two-part epoxy. We're going to do some lines of two-part epoxy on our wooden pieces. And we have to mix the epoxy up well, because it's not going to stick if you don't. And I'm just going to stack these three pieces of wood on top of each other, and then we'll clamp them down so that they uh, dry. Next we're going to need a few smaller pieces, so for that I took one piece and uh, cut it into three equal parts. And we're going to need a little more than three, I think I ended up using five of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach those onto the base piece we just made with two part epoxy as well. Now I skipped showing me making this one, but we're also going to need a second base piece without the smaller pieces mounted on top of it, it's just going to be three planks of wood thick. And then here we're actually going to make a third one for mounting the motor and it's going to be three pieces as well but we're going to have to cut them. Now with this piece here we're going to mark where the dowels are going to go. Just two spots spread out decently and then we're going to stack our three pieces that we made on top of each other. And then with that we are going to drill through them all. Now those three pieces we stacked we don't want to glue them together. We're just stacking them so that when we drill we get a straight line and it's going to be in the same spots for all of them. And then as you can see, once I'm done drilling, um, we're going to have three pieces of wood with holes drilled through all of them. Now you can see this middle piece slides a bit easier than the other ones, it's because I sanded the inside of the hole a little more because that middle piece is going to be one that needs to slide up and down. Next comes mounting the motor. I'll leave a link to where you can get this motor and the uh, chuck for the motor and I marked some holes of where we're going to need to drill. So this first hole here needs to be a bit bigger so the motor shaft can go through it and then we'll also have to drill some smaller holes for the uh, screw holes. So now we can go ahead and mount the motor in there and I skip by some of it just to make it a little quicker for you and we screw that in there and then once it's screwed in you can add the chuck. Next with the gear we're going to uh, put some sharpie on it and use this gear to mark on this piece of wood and what it's going to do is going to leave little lines um, everywhere where the gear teeth are and using the with those lines we can go ahead and cut out some teeth. And using those lines we can cut into this piece of wood and basically what we're going to want to make is a straight gear. Now the straight gear is pretty tedious to make but once it's done we can go ahead and mount that on one of our dowels. And we're actually going to need two of them, um, one for each side. So now let's drill some holes in the very top piece and they need to be holes big enough basically that our straight gears can fit through them. So you may need to drill a couple holes just to widen that initial hole up. And now I'm just going to dry fit everything. I'm going to put the gears on uh, just to see where they would fit. And then I'm going to stick the straight gear in and make sure that everything's in a position where the straight gears are going to be able to mesh with the normal gears. then we have the other straight gear that we're going to attach on the other side 
And this is basically going to be to move the drilling surface up and down. Now after the dry fitting, once you know where everything's going to go, we can go ahead and mount our uh, normal gears in there and then put something on the other side so they don't come off. Now all that we need to do is make a little bit of a handle so that uh, we have something to spin. And when we spin that handle, the gears will spin, which will move our drilling surface up and down. Now one of the problems I had was the gear wasn't sticking to the um, axle properly. So what I did is I took a little snippet of dowel, put a screw through it so I could screw it into the axle and also glue it onto the gear. The other problem I had is that this back straight gear that you can see would sometimes fall off of the gear it's supposed to mesh with, so I just built a little guide for it so that it couldn't move to either side. Now since our drilling surface is going to be moving up and down, it's going to be difficult to hold the thing that we're drilling. So instead of having to get our fingers in there and hold it and possibly get hurt, I'm going to make a little clamp that will basically hold whatever we are trying to drill. So I'll make a little box with our pieces of wood and then we're going to glue in a nut and bolt. And we're going to do that on both sides. So basically what we can do is screw the bolt in so that it squeezes whatever we want it to hold. So to power our drill, I found a DC power adapter that converts AC to DC. I'm going to solder one of the sides of the power adapter to the motor, and then the other side I'm going to separate with a switch. Once the DC power adapter and the switch are both set up, we can finally put a tool in the drill and uh, try drilling something. So because the drill isn't super high power, it takes a while to drill through wood, but if you take your time, it will get through the piece of wood that you're trying to drill through. Now as you can see it's a little easier for it to drill through things when it's using a smaller drill bit just because it doesn't require as much force to spin that drill bit and we can drill very quickly through things when we're using a small drill bit. We can also drill holes in metal. This here is uh, just an aluminum heat sink and it'll take a bit of time but we will drill through this as well. Make sure to check out my intro to Arduino course. The course comes with a kit, and the kit will have everything you need to do all the projects in the course. We have some awesome projects in the course from robotic arms to pianos to projects with LEDs, sensors, you name it. We do, we do a bunch of projects in the course, and it's an awesome starting step for people who want to learn about Arduino, electronics, or programming. So make sure to check it out.